thing. <laughs> uh, so staying focused is, you know, what I want to talk about today, right? And staying focused, because um, you're about all of you, right? It's a new season, right? So for Addy, you're getting ready to go into your junior year, right? So this is a big year for you on the recruiting side. The next 18 months are critical for you on skill development, recruiting, personal development, staying focused on graduation and continuing to improve your skills, your academics, your athletics, right? And for everybody else, it's, it's a, and, and Rue, even for you, because it's a new adventure in leadership and you have graduation coming up and all your eighth grade activities. And I don't know if you have a grad venture school and you know, all of these different things that you're going to, she's like, what's a grad venture school? That's, they take everybody to Universal for, for like a eighth grade party. Maybe you can, hey, listen, it's a thing. So maybe you can start that movement in your school to, to get the administration to approve you to go to grad venture. It's literally for eighth graders and hundreds of schools. They go to Universal Studios. They have their day with like 15 other schools and they close the park down and it's just an eighth grade celebration. Yeah, so maybe you can start the path towards grad venture for your school. Anyways, um, yeah, just an idea. Maybe not. Um, yeah, so focus. Let me get back refocused, right? So for the other three of you, you're getting ready to start high school, right? I mean, this is a whole new world, right? My voice is cracking because I'm sick. It's a whole new world for you, right? New adventures. Like literally, you went from being the big dog on campus to being the youngest kid in school. Right. And, and outside of softball, there's going to be a lot of distractions. Right. You're getting ready to enter big girl world. Right. You're getting ready to enter where teachers don't give you redos as much. Right. Where when a paper is due, if you don't turn it in on time, you know, I'm going to put a little stress on you right now. I'm probably going to end up this phone call and you're like, oh, my God, there's so many things coming up. Right. But focus only take on as much as you can take on. Right. You have to start developing just like for the batter's box, high school is going to be a routine, right? Middle school, right, was one thing, right? It's a little bit smaller, a little bit less people, you know, uh, flexible deadlines, uh, workload that isn't quite as hard, but still difficult, even if you're in advanced level classes. Now we're going to be going to high school. Now we got fall ball for high school. You know, now we have different clubs, different organizations. My point being, your fall is going to be full of new things. Right. We're going to new tournaments. We're going to new showcases. There's going to be new schools that are watching us. We're working on new pitches. We're working on increasing pop times. We're decreasing pop times. We're working on uh, making exchanges from hitting to throwing. We're working on increasing pitch times. We're working on increasing our, our position ability. There's all kinds of things that we're engaged with right now. Right. So focus. So how can we stay focused? Let's go ahead and get a screen share on here. We'll bring up the little document. Where is it at? What is it? What is it? Share. Where's my document? There's my document. Okay. So, uh, brief overview of the importance of focus in achieving goals, right? So, if we're not focused, if we don't have intentional effort, we're going to be all over the place, right? So, it's important for you as players and student athletes to have a book, right? And we've talked about a journal for sports, but a notebook, a calendar, something to be able to keep your day-to-day -day activities, right? Because think about it. Right now you're doing softball. Now you're getting ready to go into high school, the eighth grade. You're going into your junior year, all of these different things. I want you to like be part of student body government. I want you to be on powder puff. I want you to play a fall sport if you want to try something different in high school. Like on top of all of these great things and chasing a softball career and chasing a scholarship and improving our technique and doing all of these things, you're never going to be 14 again. You're never going to be 15, 16, 17 again. Once high school is over, college is going to be a blast, but it's not going to be high school. So I want you to enjoy these times. I want you to do different things. I want you to go to the Friday night football games. I want you to really have a full high school experience. Does that make sense? It can't just be school, work, softball, school, work, softball. I mean, it can, if that's all you want to do, but I want to make sure that you, you know, you know what's coming up. So explanation of how this applies to various situations like studying, being on deck and in the batter's box, right? So think about it. If I'm studying, if I had five different, six different subjects that are now advanced or, you know, I've got more extended homework for it, what is your focus plan going to be? 
what systems are you and your parents putting into place now so when this increased workload comes, we've got a plan, right? Because guess what happens? I get out of school. Now I got fall ball practice. Now I got student body government. You know, now I got maybe, I don't know, soccer practice or, you know, whatever. I right, buddy. We'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, I got you. We'll catch up tomorrow, though, because I'm on a meeting, okay? No, you're okay. Yes, sir. Great to see you. All right. Um, so there you go. Focus gets broken easily, right? So many distractions around you that can change what it is you're doing that quick, right? Prime example. So how does it apply to studying, right? You have to have time for each class. Some are going to be easier. Some of you are going to be real good at math. Some of you are going to be real good at science. Some of you are going to be real good at English. A couple of you might not really like school that much at all and maybe actually struggle, right? I mean, that's possible. Not everybody is a A-plus scholar athlete here, Right. I mean, I can take you back if you were on Alex's talk. Alex struggled in high school. She finished high school with a 2.4 GPA and had to go to a JUCO school for a couple of years. So even if you struggle with academics, I struggle. I'm going to be honest with you. Reading and how to read, but sitting down and reading a book for hours on end. I don't know if you guys know anything about me, but I'm kind of squirrely. I'm kind of all over the place, right? So sitting still for longer than 10 minutes drives me nuts. I can do it with you all because I'm having fun. Like I feel your energy. We talk, we have a good time, but typically I don't sit still very much. So sitting down in school, I was that kid that they always told to be quiet, sit down and be still lady. Are you crazy? You are telling me the exact opposite of what I need in my life. Sit down, be quiet and be still. No, I need to move. I need hands on activities and I need verbal and physical engagement. Right. And if you teach me that way, I'm going to learn. If you tell me to sit down and be quiet and be still, you're going to write me a referral because I made you mad. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, that's what's going to happen. So stay focused on your studying, build a plan, figure out what kind of learner you are, right? Does everybody understand there's different kinds of learners, right? There's visual learners, there's audio learners, there's written learners, right? And then there's people that fortunately can learn all different kinds of ways, right? I'm a hands-on learner. If you can visually show me something and I can put my hands on it, nine out of 10 chance, I'm going to be able to figure it out, right? So I want you to kind of think about what kind of learner are you? Can you learn from reading a book? Great. You're the reason that publications were invented so that you can read it and break the whole process down, right? Do you learn from watching a video or getting, you know, how can you stay focused in order to increase your learning plan? The number one way you can do that is to figure out what kind of learner you are and start focusing your study plans on that kind of learning. You can't control how people teach you, but you can control how you study for what they did teach you. Does that make sense? And studying isn't always the old traditional, here's a book, here's a worksheet, sit here and write it and take notes. Whew, that would drive me nuts, right? But it's necessary evil in order to do it. How do I stay focused being on deck? Caitlin, how would you stay focused being on deck? I just like completely focus on the picture. I don't like focus on whatever's going around or like on around me. Okay. Kind of black out like a horse has blinders on. I only see the path in front of me. Got it. Got it. Right. So here's what I want you to kind of put in your mental mind block. Right. When I'm in the batter's box and I step in there, my focus is only on that ball. Right. Making contact, getting a quality pitch that I can drive to get on base and help my team. That is the only thing in the world I'm focused on. I'm not focused that I might not get a hit. I'm not focused that I can't do it. I'm not focused on the fact that of other than anything, except I'm in that box. My eyes are on the target. I'm an F-14 Tomcat fighter plane, and I'm in that moment. Okay? Now, as soon as that moment is over, I'm going to ask you to do the hardest thing. And this is what trips most of you up. Is as soon as that moment is over, it's over. If I hit a home run and I run all four bases, it's over. It doesn't matter. It's not going to help me on my next hit, right? I'm focused on that at bat in that moment, and the rest of them don't matter. Does that make sense? Right? Because if I hit a home run on the next at bat, if all I'm thinking about is the home run I just hit, how much is that going to help me on the next one? Maybe, okay, I had confidence. I feel good. I'm going to see a pitch. Maybe I hit two, three, four in a row, right? Very rarely do you see somebody hit back-to-back -back home runs. Does it happen? Sure. Right. But I want to stay focused on where I'm at now. Just like if I strike out, if I step in that batter's box and I strike out, I ground out, I hit a line drive, boom, done, over. 
as soon as the umpire raises their hand, it's done. Because is it going to help me focus on my next at bat? Nope. Right? Okay. So section one, understanding focus, talking points. What does it mean to be locked in? Nevea, I'm locked in. What does that mean? I think it honestly depends on the person and the situation you're in because locked in can honestly, yes, it means focus, but depending on the situation you're in, it's kind of what you're focusing on, pinpointing certain things that you need to prioritize more than others. Okay. So locked in for you is being able to prioritize A, B, C, D, one, two, three. This is what I need to do. I'm locked into achieving these tasks. Correct. Love it. Rue, what's locked in mean for you? Staying focused, like focusing on what I'm doing. Rue, you can't use my 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 topic. <laughs> give what? me something other than the focus word. I get it. Um, I know it's exactly what it means, but I want you to give me a deeper layer. Um, all right, let me say it a different way. Define the word focus. If you say being locked in, I'm You're... cutting you out. <laughs> if you say being locked in, I'm cutting you off. You're, I'm hanging up. <laughs> um, Like really like when you're doing something, you're paying attention. There you go. I love it. It's the only thing on your mind, right? Yeah. You're paying, you're making that exchange. I'm giving you my eye contact, my focus, I'm giving you everything it is I have in this moment because you are the single most important thing in my brain, right? I'm locked in. This is it, right? Addy, what's locked in for you? She would be like, what you got? Um, Addy, don't say what they said. I'm right, trying let me give you the, not let me, to. Here, here, let me give you a different question since that one was easily answered with other people. Why is focus pretty important, crucial in both sports and academics. Why is it important to focus in sports and academics when you're doing either one? Um, For academics, it's like keeping on track with like your work and stuff, like where the teacher's at, or like if you're doing like, if you have like homework and stuff, you gotta keep up with that. Okay. Um, and then sports it's just like paying attention to like maybe if there's something mechanically wrong that you can fix okay paying attention to that to like like the little tiny details or yeah. like just staying in the moment no i love all those answers that's great right and the little tiny details right because sometimes it's hard to focus on the little details Right. Sometimes we get so focused on the big things that go our way or that don't go our way. We don't pay attention to those little things that we do all the way to get to that point. Right. Like the pyramid is a pyramid because somebody started laying it brick by brick in order to make a beautiful structure that would last centuries and centuries and centuries. Right. And we think about the pyramid as being that structure. But how often do you get to the detail of that pyramid and how each brick and each tunnel and each cavern and the architecture and all of that, all of those little things require focus and a plan in order to achieve what we now call greatness in the pyramids. Does that make sense? All right. So you should have filled out being locked in at this point. You should have filled out uh, focus is crucial because, oh, why is focus important? If I'm not focused, what can happen? Um, if you're not focused, like just say you're fielding and you haven't focused on what you're doing, you may miss the ball. You may not know like where you're going to throw the ball for the play. And like if you're hitting, if you're not focused on deck, you won't know how fast the pitcher is or where she's pitching or what pitch to exactly look for while you're in that box. Love it. I love it. Have you guys ever been in the dugout and then were like, hey, you, you're up on deck and you didn't even know it? Come on, that's happened to everybody. Some people have not paid attention, and the lineup went real quick. A couple of people got a couple quick hits. You just got back from the bathroom. You were drinking your Gatorade, not paying attention, right? It's happened to all of us, right? But that's focus, right? And, and it's those little, little details, right? An example of being focused in sports is just that, right? Knowing what inning it is, knowing what out we're on, knowing what the count is, right? Knowing the situation, talking to your teammates, being a leader, all of that is examples of focus in sports. All right, very good. Strategies for achieving focus, setting clear, achievable goals, right? So again, 
this is the biggest reason why a lot of you feel kind of stressed out or like what you're doing isn't enough or like you're letting people down or you, you, you have these kind of unsurmountable goals that Rome was built in a day. I got to get everything done. I can't make any mistakes. I have to be perfect because you want it all now, right? If we set clear achievable goals like this season, right? Give me a goal, Nevea. Give me a goal for this season that you want to achieve here in the fall. Give me a give me a clear achievable goal that you want to achieve for the fall season only. Not the whole year, just the next 4 months. I want to learn a curve in pitching. I want to learn a curve in pitching. Okay. Very good. Okay. So now with that goal, what are your timelines for that goal? Can I give you like months range instead of like this day yeah, to this? You know, I don't, I don't need August 15th at 4 PM. <laughs> right. No. Um, I want to give myself probably a good three and a half to four months. Right. Not Just to throw, a, not to throw a perfect one, but to be comfortable with the moves. Exactly. Right. Right. Oh, give me a clear achievable goal for the fall season. Um, to get my pop that well pop time down to 1.8 1.8 where is it is right now 1.9 1.9 so we're looking at tenth of a second right so so again dna right growing maturing getting older lifting working out uh involving technique right so in your books and your workbooks will be coming soon i know i keep saying that but we're we're on chapter nine out of 12 now so we're making progress um so, um, you know, hopefully by the time, time we get deep into the fall season, we'll, we'll be ready to go with that. But clear, achievable goals. So for that, I'm at a 1.9. I want to be at a 1.8. So between now and the end of the fall, I'm going to set X amount of workouts. I'm going to do X amount of arm workouts. I'm going to do X amount of leg workouts. I'm going to do X amount of transitions. I'm going to make sure that I'm going to dedicate X amount of practice time to it, right? So again, I sent you guys those smart goal worksheets. I can resend it again if we don't know where it's at. I would suggest whatever computer or email you get this stuff on, you create a little lead your journey folder on that computer. And if your parents aren't getting you guys everything, you can always email me your email address. Like Olivia's done it, Caitlin's done it, Addie's done it, I think Nevaeh's done it. Um, so you can always email me your email address. And when I email all the parents, I can email you these forms as well so you have them and then you save them on your folder so if you have the smart goals worksheet that will break down each one of these clear achievable goals into smaller steps so that you can achieve them and manage them does that make sense cool creating a distraction free environment so a few minutes ago when that guy came up to me and he started wanting to talk to me that's an example of a non uh i am i am in a distraction uh environment Somebody could walk up to me right now and there's no, no barriers from stopping them, right? So it's hard for me to stay focused in here if someone keeps coming up and talking to me and it's not fair to you in the group, right? So that's the same thing with whatever you're doing. If you, Nevaeh, if you want to throw a curveball, then when you go out to practice curveballs, there shouldn't be any distractions. Your phone shouldn't be anywhere around you unless it's recording you for feedback. Right. We shouldn't be Instagram and TikTok and we shouldn't have our friends and we should be focused on the target, getting better. This 45 minutes is dedicated strictly to pitching the curveball. Oh, if I'm going out in order to increase my pop time, this practice is a distraction free environment where I'm not doing anything but working. Right. If I need to take a break. OK. But when I'm working on achieving my focus, I want to set clear, achievable goals and I want to create a distraction free environment. Okay. And then finally, I want to practice mindfulness and breathing techniques because stuff gets nerve wracking, doesn't it? Doesn't this get a little hard sometimes? Doesn't this get a little frustrating, right? Doesn't it get just make you mad? Doesn't it just make you go, ah, doesn't it make you go like what in the snap? Like, just imagine if you practice all week and you put in more effort, more effort that you ever put in. And then you went to play a tournament and you didn't get all the results that you wanted, right? Just imagine how frustrating that can be. Right. And O thinks I'm talking about her right now. And I'm not because what she doesn't realize is there's six other people out of the 10 in this group who ended their summer tournaments pretty much the same way. Right. It happens. And here's why we think we got bad. Right. And not realizing that it's a, it's a progression. Right. And when you go and you do different things, right. Staying focused. is hard. 
right? The hardest thing to do is stay focused towards the end of something because we're tired. We're worn out. We don't want to admit it because if we admit it, mom and dad are going to stay on top of us. Coach isn't going to play us. Coach Bill's going to tell me to suck it up and stay motivated. So we can't admit that we're tired. But we're tired, sleeping in hotels all summer, missing our friends, doing all these different things. We get to the end of the summer and we're like, ah, now I got to stay focused, right? But between now and this time next year, oh, guess what? You're going to show up to that summer ball tournament focused like a girl in steel-plated armor, right? And balls are just going to be flying off your bat, right? Because that's what we're starting to believe, Right? And the more that we believe it with our mindset, the more that we can focus on getting everything it is that we showed up for. Does that make sense? Caitlin, my goal for this season is? To get my home to first time down to 2.6. Okay. All right. So, Nevaeh wants a curveball. O wants a better pop time. And you want a better run time. Down to what? 2.6. 2.6. And where is it right now? Like 2.72. Okay. So you're flying like butter over there. Yeah, good girl, right? I love it, right? So so what are some small achievable goals that you can do over this summer in order to work towards achieving those goals? Um, I did my first like session at Uber's Audi today. Yes, girl. How was it? Did you enjoy it? Yeah, it was really, it was really good. There's definitely some like form things that I need to work on to get my time down. And then like weightlifting, getting my legs stronger. Yeah. Did you get on the uh, speed treadmill yet? They probably got to work you into that. Did you get on it? Yeah, we did on it, but I like, we weren't like going super fast. We were sure, focusing of- on like form and stuff yeah some of them girls get up to 20 plus miles an hour on that thing in some of the videos i've seen it's incredible so great i'm glad you made that connection i'm glad that uh you had a good session there very good so my goal for this summer is to lower my run time down to a 2.6 okay great so addy in order to create a distraction free environment (laughs) i will what (laughs) Um, first of all, you're asked, <laughs> that's a very funny question, because... That's why I asked you. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, I really don't know, because I'm still, like, trying to work on it. Yeah, But I right? mean, like, how, like, I, like, stay focused is, like, I have to, like, doodle or, like just do something like I'm still listening and I can hear but I just like I need to do something and right. not no, like I, I can't sit still I understand right and and look you don't you know I'm not complaining I think it's great I love your drawings right you're engaged you never missed a question when I ask you I know you're paying attention that that wasn't why I asked you that right but for you yeah. for you you create a distraction free environment by having those little things because otherwise you would be distracted yeah. Right. Like you've identified that for yourself. Right. Or someone has helped you identify that. So so you then use those tools in order to help yourself from being distracted, because otherwise, my guess is you would be spinning in the chair and looking all around the roof and wondering where the butterflies were coming from. Right. Yep. No, I get it. Nothing wrong with that. Right. So so Rue, you're your pitcher. Right. You're a good hitter. You try to stay focused as much as you possibly can. During pitching lessons or hitting lessons or or maybe other times, how do you create a distraction free environment for yourself? Um, like if there are people around me, I tone out the noise and I just focus on me and my instructor. I just don't worry about anything else around me. Got it. Got it. And one mindfulness mindfulness technique that you guys can use is literally just kind of if you're in the box, step out. Take a deep breath, call time, get your composure about you. No, I'm here to focus. My job is to find a quality pitch, get on base, help my team, right? If I can make it that simple every time, I just want to see contact and drive the ball. It's not any more than that, right? Because when we don't make it more than that, we typically get on base. When we make it about more than that, we typically 
have too much to think about and can't make a decision at the right moment, right? So limit the distractions, limit uh, the, the issues and have more focus. Section three, staying focused in the moment. Isn't this the hardest part, right? Because I can focus all week at practice. Man, I can focus all week at practice. I am locked in. I hit 50 buckets this week. I wanted 10 to the left, 10 to the right, and 10 up the middle, and I got every single one of them. And now I get to the tournament, and I put all this extra pressure on myself to be great that I didn't put on the week before because of all the work that I put in, right? So continue to put that pressure on yourself, but continue to trust yourself to work through that pressure so that you can stay present in the moment. Techniques for staying present. It's literally that quick, breathing. Right. The reason, you know, the reason that they say breathing is because the more oxygen your body gets in a calm manner, the more your heart rate slows down. The more your heart rate slows down, the more your body can react in a in a stressful situation in a positive manner. Right. That's why if you ever see anybody in, in doing anything and they're like <laughs> and they're hyperventilating, like they have no control, they have no focus, they're they're they need to find some techniques they need to relax internally that could be wrong maybe not every time but internally they may be some times where you all are hyperventilating on the inside you're not going to show anybody but inside you're like uh, okay i hope this goes the way i want it to right that's internal panic not believing in yourself not being able to stay present where you're at and another great part of that is present where you're at means it doesn't matter where i've been it doesn't even matter where I'm going. It matters where I'm at right here in this moment in order to be able to achieve this task. Does that make sense? Word life. Okay, managing negative thoughts and self-talk. Nevea, do you do you still, and it's okay if you do, do you still find self-doubt in yourself? Absolutely. Perfect, perfect. I get it, right? Tell me about it. What's when? How do you manage those thoughts and self-talk? If I'm being so honest, it genuinely just comes with maturing and just kind of learning how to work your way through it. it there's not really a specific, some things work for some people, some things work for others. For me, it's on, it was honestly just like maturing and figuring out like my talent and my self-worth. And I, I am still working on that. But just kind of growing into myself helps you a lot. Just kind of not really about it. Yeah, no, I love that. I love that. So, Rue, how do you manage negative self-talk, right? Just just imagine like one part of your game isn't going the way that you want it to. One part is working really well. The other part isn't doing everything you want it to. How do you tell the good part that it's going well and the part that it maybe needs improvement to – Okay, we're doing all right, but let's get it together. How do how do you manage that talk in between your own head? Um, if like I do get like a negative thought coming through my head about I can't do this, like it's let's say my pitching's work, my pitching is not on, but my hitting is. Like, if I get a thought going through my head of like I can't throw my rise, I'll like rephrase it of a positive thought, like I can throw a rise. And I feel like that just works for me. Brings you up. Love it. Okay. Importance of letting go past outcomes, right? So, Rue, I'm going to stay with you on this one, right? Just just imagine, right, being able to let go of something that maybe didn't go the way you wanted it to or thought it would go and being able to grow from that. How do you let go of those negative situations that had a strong impact on you? Um, I've learned through this program that I just need to like let go. Like if I get a negative person on me and they're hating on me, oh well, it's just one person. I need to find who I am in myself and that's just helped me a lot, just realizing who like what I am through yeah. the sport and it's just yeah. helped me a lot. I love it, right? And I want you to stay focused on what you are individually as well. Right. Who you are through the sport is an amazing athlete, but who you are individually is an amazing human being. Right. And and the sport ends and and you're so much more than the sport. All of you are. Right. I mean, your internal person, your persona, your character, your personality, what you're going to bring into the world is going to be 
magnified through softball, but there's going to be so much more of you and so much more that you do in the world outside of softball as you continue to grow, right? Remember, softball is something we do. It's not who we are. Because if it's who we are, when it ends, we have nothing left, right? So we have to manage it to be something that we do, something that we love, something that is super important, something that drives us. But, but it's the, the root of who we are is something deeper than a little yellow ball. Does that make sense? I know you might be like, no, I love softball and I got softball for life 24 seven. And I get that, have that passion, have that focus, right? But, but have an internal presence of security within yourself to know that you're more than that yellow ball as well. Does that make sense? Word life, okay. So we've answered a lot of these, right? To stay present. What can I do to stay present, Addy? Besides talking to Lee. Ooh, not, not dad. <laughs> not, not, not dad. What can I do to stay present in the moment? Um. Ooh. All right. It's, uh, I'm going to give you a it? clue. Yeah, I'm going to give you a clue. It's number one on talking points. Yeah, I'm just <laughs> trying to like, is there a simpler help. way you could put it? Sure. To stay present, I can. <laughs> I mean, oh, it's five words. Okay. I don't know it any simpler than that. Um, <laughs> All right, here we go. Let me rephrase it. To stay present in the moment, right? To be where I'm at, what can I do to be there? What can I do? How, how about this? What can I do to limit distractions? What can I do to stay present where I'm at? To not let my mind roam off to things that aren't necessarily true. Um, I guess like putting like imaginary blinders on. Okay. Could be could be one thing. Okay. Uh, Try. I got it right. Trying to just move on and move past it, right? Yeah. I got. I got it. So being in the moment. Right, not paying attention to distractions. So, uh, when I have negative thoughts, right, I want to manage those self-talk thoughts, and I want to rephrase them, right? Like, like uh, Rue said, right. When I say I can't, right, I say I can. When I say, you know, someone tells me this is this is impossible. You're never going to achieve this. Well, you know, that's your opinion. That's what you think. I know internally, I'm working hard every single day in order to get and be where I want to be. So, I'm going to rephrase those to something positive where something is negative and it says I can't do something well okay I'm going to rephrase that in my mind to say look I've done this I've trust my process I've hit the ball in the box I've fielded a ball I've pitched a ball I've caught a ball I've trusted myself in academics I've built good relationships with my parents all this negative stuff is just thoughts it's just thoughts it's just not true letting go of past incomes is important because it will drain you it will bury you Worrying about what this guy said or that girl said or worrying about this mistake or that mistake, right? Worrying about this thing or that thing or what this coach said or that coach said or this teacher said or that teacher said. You know, I'm going to use another point that Rue said, right? There's 7 billion people in this world, right? If you let the weight of one person hold you down that much, you're giving them too much power, right? Your parents right now have the ultimate control, right? They're influencing you day to day. Those are the people that are important. And we need to worry about what they say, what our coaches say and all of that. But people that come at us negative, haters, if you will, negative Nancy's, people who can't necessarily do what we do, right? We have to, you know, let them know that we're, we're moving on, right? That we're not holding on to the will that you're trying to hold over me. Right, that I'm going to move on from this person. I'm going to move on from this at bat. I'm going to move on from this error. I'm going to move on from this test. I'm going to move on from this positive thing, negative thing. It happened in the moment. We celebrate it. We move on. It happened in the moment. We reflect on it. We move on. It happened in the moment. We get hurt. We cry. We break down. We rebound. We figure it out. We move on. Right? But either way, we move where? On, that's the word, right? We let it go, let it go. Don't hold back anymore. Let it go, let it go. No? All right, well, I'm going to let that go. All right, I think, oh, two more sections. Here we go. Talking points, following the process through outcomes. Um, boom, yeah, plenty of there. Embracing both failure and victory. This is what I'm talking about. 
right? So whether you hit the home run or you strike out, the moment it's over, round the bases, walk back to the dugout, by the time you get to either one, it's over. Great, you helped your team score a run. You knocked in a dinger. You hit a grand slam. You hit a triple. Great. The next inning, no one cares, right? You struck out. You 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 didn't get the big hit. The next inning, no one cares. And I, I they care. You know what I'm saying, right? Don't take me figuratively, right, or literally, but take me figuratively. Everybody cares, but it's not going to affect the game. The next inning, we have a new opportunity to come in and refocus. Yeah. Learning from each experience, right? Do we learn from experience? Right, Nave, you used it earlier, right? You, you know, you you use the word experience, right? That's mature. I use maturing, right? Maturing and experience go hand in hand. As I get older, I go through more experiences than I mature. As I get older I, and mature, I go through more experiences. So, you know, how can how have you learned from past experiences to kind of chart where you're at now? Okay. Um, I'm sorry. Can you ask the question again? Sure. No problem. How are, have you learned from past experiences, good or bad, in order to navigate and chart where you're at now? And it could be anything. It doesn't even have to be softball. Like this happened, good or bad. I had a great experience and it helped me do this. I had a terrible experience and I learned how to do this. Yeah, probably reflecting on it and breaking down like – for let's meta like fake what hypothetically <laughs> what just happened <laughs> meta figure blah meta figure blah but well, Kaylin's okay. so stoic tonight Kaylin's not laughing she's not frowning she's just very stoic tonight she's chill go ahead Nevaeh learning from experience hypothetically let's say you know, we're all either some of us are in high school. We have um, someone going into, I believe, eighth grade. And then we have people moving into high school. For us going into high school, I feel like one of those things, being in high school, we're going to encounter fake people. It's oh. going to happen. So definitely when I say reflect, if you kind of, and this also comes with maturing, when you kind of get that feeling about somebody, you kind of sit there and kind of like, okay, this is what they do. This is like kind of put pieces together or kind of break things down in order to get your final result of something and using that for other experiences that have to do with softball schoolwork that helps you a lot to move on from things a lot quicker because you eventually find out whether it was a good thing for you, whether it was a life lesson, whether it was bad and that goes for just anything. Love it. I love it, man. Great answer. Caitlin, keeping the end goal in mind, right? We're just getting ready to start high school. We've got so many short-term goals, right? Try out for the high school team, be on fall ball, adapt to high school, trend new travel ball team, all these immediate goals. But the end goal is graduate, get a scholarship, right? You know, play on a great travel ball team, do all these wonderful things, right? How do we stay focused on that end goal while navigating all these other little things in the way? I feel like taking it day by day, not like stressing over it too much, knowing that whatever happens is going to happen for a reason and trusting it, like almost like riding the wave. Don't take your lows too low. Don't take your highs too high. Just work through it. Yeah. Right. Knowing that we're working for the outcome and the, and the result, not the immediate uh, a victory, right? Each little victory adds up to big victories, but keeping the end goal in mind is going to help you get through those downturns, right? Because again, I keep saying this, like negative things, positive things, they're going to happen, right? And how you handle them is the difference, right? How you handle them decides how far we fall, how long we stay down there, how long it takes us to climb, and how long it takes us to get back up. So as we learn focus, as we learn breathing, as we learn positive self-talk, as we learn journaling, as we learn all of these smart goals and, amb and all of these things, if you truly apply them, then these are the things that you're going to use while you're navigating the end goal through these challenges, right? Does that make sense, right? It's just like, you know, learning a new pitch. Why do I learn a new pitch? Because it gives me another tool in my arsenal to be able to get a batter to make me better, right? So I'm using 
um, you know, all of this end goal in mind. Where do I want to be? How do I get there? What steps and processes do I use? Who's my support group, right? And then how do I rebound that in order to track my progress, hold myself accountability, uh, to accountability in order to get better absolutely every single day? That's it. That's what we're working on, right? So failure is a part of the process because, right, if, if, if success is a part of the process, failure is a part of the process, right? You're going to have success and failure no matter what happens in anything you do, period. I can learn from my failures by maturing, accepting them, writing them down, making sure that I'm acknowledging them, that I'm learning from them and taking the experience from them for what there is. Right. OK, being upset, but not pouting, being disappointed, but not moping, right, not holding on to it. Great. I hit a home run. Good. It's over. Great. I struck out. Good. It's over. Now I need to continue on that path of keeping the end goal in mind and getting that experience from my failures so that I continue to move forward. Sounds like a great process if it actually works. huh? Oh, <laughs> right. It's but it's tough. It's tough to be able to go, well, I struck out today. I'm going to trust my process because the end goal is what's in mind. It's like, no, I wanted to hit that daggum ball and I wanted people to cheer for me, right? Well, remember the times you did hit the ball. They're, they're, you know, they're not just as many as the other ones, but you're still, all of you are above reproach. Everybody on this Zoom right now is an above average softball player. You're an above average academic kid. You're an above average athlete. If you're not believing that, well, call me. We'll have a one-on-one -on -one session because you should be. All right? All right, last section for the night, practical application. Applying these principles in everyday situations. How can I apply focus to an everyday situation? Oh, give me something outside of softball that I can apply focus to. Okay. Maybe school, like focusing on maybe what you're struggling with. Like if it's math, maybe focus on that more than English or something. Okay. All right. Give me something, uh, Rue, outside of softball and school where I can apply these. Did I lose her? Is she gone? Looks like she's gone. She must have got cut off driving home. She was driving home. So, Neve, let me come to you. Outside of school and softball, how uh, how can I, oh, geez, apply these principles in everyday situations? This is more general. There's no specific, like, situation or anything. But on a day-to-day, -day, just kind of prioritizing things that need to be prioritized rather than us prioritizing things that we want to prioritize. All right. Very good. I love it. Group discussion on personal experiences and challenges. I think we've done that for most of the hour here, talking about things that we've done and been through and gone through. Developing a personal action plan. So that's going to be the next thing I send you because we did those goal sheets, right? So uh, we've gone through this and focused. So now over the next week, well, before we get to our next one-on-one, -on -one, I'll be sending each one of you your personal action plan. And then we'll go over that on your next one-on-one -on -one to build a plan for the rest of the fall, Okay. All right, so update on the program. Like I said, we're on chapter nine right now of the 12 chapter uh, actual workbook. Once we're done with that, we have to start building the worksheets. A lot of the things like this that you guys um, kind of already have. Um, and then uh, the app is just about done. Um, here, let me screen share. Check this out. A lot of you haven't seen this. So let me, let me screen share this and show it to you real quick. So um, here is the website. Um, for the Lead Your Journey program. You guys can all see this, right? All right, so it's the video that we made there. Uh, we added recruit there, mentor, lead, develop, recruit. Uh, here's a little welcome video that I made about softball and life and all of that. Oh, this is the coach's one. Hold on. So let me go here. This is the actual homepage. Hold on. Booyah. Here we go. So, boom. Are you ready to unlock your full potential? Are you a student athlete? Or are you a parent, coach, or team? Right. So all of you are the student athlete. Right. And then here's what you get coming into the program. We mentor you. We lead you. We develop you recruiting and brand building. Start on your journey to excellence. There's Jess. There's me again. Cool dude in a video. Some college coaches at my most recent camp. Some amazing softball players that I've dealt with in the past. Some cool dude that doesn't ever know when to be quiet. 
um, all the cool stuff I've done in my life. There's Peyton over there as the little student athlete thing. There's Jess, some people from the camp. You guys all know Alex. Uh, there's O, there's Peyton, there's me. Oh, check it out. You're on my, you're on my website. Oh, that's Peyton. There it go. Oh, this must be a group one. That's Peyton. Did he change it? That looked like you to begin with. Let's go over here. Ah, there it is. They reversed it. Pretty cool. So, I mean, that's pretty cool. Like your messages and the things that we've done in this group are now going out to help other girls try to become a part of this group to help them, right? So I think that's pretty cool. So would you guys agree with these things that you get from joining the group? I mean, you're in the group, so you tell me. Would you agree that we go over leadership and we develop your leadership skills? Would you agree that we do multi-tiered mentorship, meaning you have multiple coaches at multiple different levels that help you when you have situations? Digital mentorship tools. You don't really have those yet, but the app is coming. It's in development. Would you agree that you get life skills and personal branding? Recruiting exposure, recruiting leadership. I mean, you can read it there. I don't need to go through all of it, but that's kind of what the program does. Now, if you're a student athlete, you click on that one. Page kind of looks the same. It's a lot of the same stuff. My video, again, this is kind of more of what you get, more of kind of the same stuff. These are the kids that played for me, kind of people that have been through the program. A couple good pictures. There's Peyton. There's LB. There's the two Peytons. Some good stuff going on. More stuff that you get. Coach Pat, look at him. He's a boss, right? And then uh, a couple of the girls that help. There's Liz up there. So that's pretty cool. Uh, there's more Peyton, more O. There's Nevea. So we got some Nevea going on on the website. Uh, cool things your parents have said about me in the program. And then um, and then that's it. Then the other page would be for the coach. Uh, we'll go back. And then the coaches page, parents and teams. So like if your organizations want me to come out and deliver a workbook, give a big speech, you can do that. And then look, Addy, there's your dad. Ah, your dad's on my website. Yep, and there's uh, Coach Kevin from Team Tampa. So it's pretty cool. All the things the coaches get, me speaking, the stuff that they get, more cool pictures, and uh, you guys saying how cool we are again. And then that's it. So that is uh, – that's what's in development. It's coming. You guys are all a huge part of it. Uh, you've given me the privilege and the honor to uh, kind of be the first group of kids uh, to go through it. And I'm going to tell you, for me, man, like we're entering what, February, March, April, May, June, July. So we're in we're in month six now. So to see y'all's progress, Addy, give me eye contact for two seconds. To see y'all's progress, it's okay. I'm going to make you sit still and be uncomfortable for a minute. To see y'all's progress and really, Addy, go back to drawing. To uh, <laughs> Because you're staring at me awkwardly. It's uncomfortable now. Right. So I enjoy you drawing more. I want you to send me pictures of those drawings. Um, see that? I just got distracted by Addie's drawing and staying instead of focused on the actual speech. Caitlin just laughed at me internally. That's what she just did. Now she's laughing at me externally. It's all good. So anyways, man, six months in, I appreciate y'all, right? You're really uh, teaching me as much as I'm teaching you. You're helping me define and refine and make this program better for so many girls uh, across the country. So you're kind of pioneers in this thing. And I really appreciate you. You're OGs. You'll be locked in for life. So you get all the cool benefits and stuff. So cool, man. Well, I appreciate y'all. Any questions for me? Any situations we need to talk about? Any, hey, Coach Bill, you got five extra minutes. Is everything good? If you did not have a one-on-one -on -one last week, please make sure you have your one-on-one -on -one this upcoming week, right? I don't want to and if you ever need a, you know, like, oh, took a couple conversations, like uh, PC took one before she went to Pensacola or Panama, where is she at? Oklahoma. Right. So if we ever need like, hey, dude, I'm having a bad day. You know, you can always text me if you need that quick. You know, sometimes I'm going to tell you I love you. Hey, it's OK. Other times I'm going to tell you what, oh. Yeah, you better pull your head out of your behind and get it together because ain't nobody feeling bad for you right now. Right. I mean, that's real life. Right. Like I care. Softball doesn't care. Right. I care. Owen three doesn't care. Right. Me caring isn't going to help you be successful in the game. You have to stay locked in, focused and ready to navigate good and bad times. Right. All right. Cool. I'm taking this whole lesson and putting it online today. So 
everybody's going to be able to watch our lesson and uh, not just cutting it up in clips, but I'm putting the whole thing out. This is a good one. You guys did really well. You stayed focused and locked in for the uh, for the whole lesson. Dude, I can't tell you how hyped up I am. And you know what I'm even more excited about? Because I coach a high school team. So if I see y'all out on the field this year, I'm going to whoop y'all behind. I'm just telling y'all. I'm just coming for We play Wiregrass. You're on my schedule. We're better. You're on my schedule. I'm We're actually better. scheduled to play your team. So I, the other three, you get a pass this year. Um, but but Nevaeh, I'm scheduled to play Wiregrass. So good luck. Good luck. I love it. I love it. All right. Oh, you good? All right. Caitlin, you good? Nevaeh, you good? Addy, you good? All right, girls. I appreciate y'all. I, I am very proud of y'all. And uh, I will put the calendar out for individuals next week. If you need anything in between there, let me know. All right. See you guys.